I love Roman Reigns. There's no point pretending otherwise. I just want to find him and give him a hug. But ever since we did transform him into the Tribal Chief, he has taken the reins of WWE and he has rode it all the way to Happy Town. He's also become the star that WWE has always wanted him to be. And I will tell you firsthand, I went to WrestleMania 38 and when he was doing his entrance walk down the aisleway, I stared at him and thought, yep, that's a star. It is fair to say though, that when we did get to his match against Brock Lesnar, it didn't necessarily live up to expectations, mostly because a lot of us thought we were gonna get something brand new and they kind of just did what they always did. So all of that was a little bit weird and it did inspire this conversation, which was, I think WWE has a problem with Roman Reigns. Why? Here's why. And we shall stick with the mania fallout to begin because this confused so many people. There became this rumor that maybe Roman Reigns got injured, which is why the match ended so abruptly. As it turned out, this was not the case. And when you think about it, as WWE is clearly putting even more stock behind Roman, you may as well have him absolutely beat Brock Lesnar nice, clean and easy in the middle because it gives more fuel to his rocket pack. It did mean that there was some more confusion around the corner though, because all of this led to the fact that Roman Reigns is now our super duper, oh my gosh, I can't believe it, WWE champion. So surely there was going to be some massive plan for him. But instead, he beat up Shinsuke Nakamura on our end of episode of SmackDown, and Shinsuke didn't seem to care about any of this. And then from nowhere, we started the feud with Drew McIntyre, even though we were only one week away from WrestleMania Backlash. And this makes sense because it had been on the cards for ages, and the irony was, taking our world champion away from Raw actually made it a better show. Because we had to build Monday nights around the likes of RK Bro, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, and Cody Rhodes. And for my money over the last few weeks, Monday nights have been better than they have been for a while. The thing is though, if we have deliberately turned Roman into Superman, how the hell can we not have a plan? Because he has now also held the top goal for over 600 days, meaning he is just an excellent conduit to take all of this magic and pass it on to somebody else. But the problem is, WWE seems absolutely terrified to choose his successor. I mean, you'd have to guess that the big plan is to get to WrestleMania 39, where finally we will do The Rock versus Roman Reigns. But if we do, and Roman doesn't lose, he, at that time, will have been champion for around about 950 days. And if you make it to 950, good grief. Just go the extra 50 and get to the big 1,000. The thing is, all of this needs to tie into something else, especially if you're about to beat Dwayne Johnson, who's a bona fide celebrity. And do not get me wrong, I am not saying it's bad he's held a belt for this long. In fact, I think you should do it for more people. Because if you want to make a wrestler credible, you give them the championship and go, <laughs> would you look at that, he never loses. My counterpoint to all of this though, is examples such as this. The UK, that's right for what I'm talking to you right now, has a big stadium show in September. And would it really hurt the former big dog if he took on Drew McIntyre there in the main event and Drew won the belt? I'm gonna say not at all. He can then win it back at the Royal Rumble before taking on the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. Although I do not believe that any of that is going to happen, because if you've been keeping an eye on social media, it seems like we're destined for Drew McIntyre versus Tyson Fury at that event. That just makes me a confused man. What this does do though, is deprive us of a potential moment. Because if Drew does have this big homecoming and he actually did become the universal WWE champion, whatever the hell you want to call it, that is something we could put into our hearts and remember forever. Once again, we're not gonna do that because we have to do something with Roman Reigns, but we don't know what that is. Now plans can change within a day, but what this means is fans have gotten into a routine of going, well, you know, I like Roman Reigns, he's cool, but I never think he's going to lose. And a good example of this from recent years is the Undertaker streak. I mean, why do you think it was so quiet when we did have the dead man taking on Brock Lesnar? Because nobody thought the Beast was going to win. Now, actually, this did result in one hell of an incredible moment where stunned silence filled an entire arena. But you need to have energy going into matches as big as this. Otherwise, it's just a little bit pants. I mean, the last thing you want to do is get into another feud with the head of the table and everybody just sits on their hands. And actually, this is why Brock Lesnar was a good opponent for him. Because you said to yourself, well, I'm pretty sure Roman will win. But I ain't 100% sure. So just to sum up, there has to be a tiny doubt in your head that somebody can be defeated. I mean, take someone like Stone Cold Steve Austin. He lost all the time, 
because WW realized when it came to the Texas Rattlesnake, the fun was in the chase. And of course, when he was the champion, it was awesome. This all revved up when he was going after the likes of The Undertaker, or Triple H, or The Rock, or Kane. I mean, that is one of the reasons at King of the Ring 1998, when the Big Red Machine did win the title, because then Stone Cold 24 hours later could beat him for it. I mean, they also wanted a pop a rating, but why was that? Because everybody loved to see Stone Cold win the belt and not necessarily hold on to it. And I know you can throw Hulk Hogan in there as a counterpoint to this, but I think when he was on top, wrestling was just a very different thing. I mean, it was the last realms of kayfabe. And of course, it is true that a big reason for this could be because WWE operates in a very different way nowadays. Like they don't even care about having a massive on-top star who controls everything. They want those three initials to be the reason you buy a ticket, and they've kind of done it. I mean, WrestleMania gets announced, we don't know the matches, and everybody buys a ticket. I also think it's true that if Roman did step away tomorrow, it wouldn't be a massive problem, because the machine would kick into gear, we'd just create a new one. So this is a far cry away from a world where the likes of Austin The Rock or Brock Lesnar would prop up the whole company and create a ripple, but Vince McMahon wants it this way. I mean, it's so obvious. Because he became terrified that he would put all of his stock and all of his investment into making a new star, and then maybe like Dwayne Johnson, they go off to Hollywood, or maybe like Brock, they just go, nope, I don't want to do it anymore. And you can't say it hasn't worked because WWE right now is making more money than ever, but it does tie into this whole storytelling that pro wrestling is known for, whether you're talking about in the ring or out of it. Let's be honest though, if Nakamura had had that match, would he have won? Your hand goes down. It's the same with Drew McIntyre, and it has been the same with Edge, Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, the list just goes on and on. My big hope, as we have spoken about before, is that Cody Rhodes gets this nod, especially because he's the brand new exciting babyface. But do I trust that deep down in my tum tum? Oh no, I'm not totally sure. So you do have to give credit for what Roman Reigns has done with this character, because he is an absolute monster right now. But if it doesn't actually have a reason for existing, then we're all kind of spinning plates. So really you want to make sure this drips down to the rest of the roster so we can prepare some people from the big boy slot. But more importantly than that, you want every single fan to stare off into the distance and think to themselves, well, what if? And are we doing that with Roman Reigns right now? Clearly the judge and the jury have gone, maybe not. This could all change too though, I hold my hands up, I am massively speculating here. And when all is said and done, we really should be happy that Roman Reigns did come back as a bad guy when he did. Because do not forget all the stuff he was doing as the big dog. Suffering Thakatash indeed. Now please do leave a comment below and let us know what you think about Roman Reigns, his title run, and what we should do with him in the future. I mean, who should beat him? Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then you can head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles like this with your eyes and your brain. You can also follow us on social media at WhatCultureWWE or I'm at CyberMiller316. And we have so many videos. Every single one was made just for you. That's right, just for you, Brian. We will see you soon. My name is Simon Watt Culture. I ended the video too early there. I mean, we could have ended it there, but you know, I've got a routine I do now. And if I don't do my routine, maybe aliens will attack. And as the world is being burned to dust, everyone will go, Simon, why didn't you just say the words? As ever, I don't know what I'm talking about, but this is for the crew that do watch these videos all the way to the end. Aren't we just a weird bunch? Goodbye.